and if you answer them correctly, he might give you a... <clears throat> Wait a second, I need, I need to prepare my voice for this. Bonus point. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the 11 courses that I took this year, one of these courses was ELEC 202. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course, and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking ELEC 202 during the 2023-2024 school year with Professor Louis Linares in semester 2. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. Alright, so what is ELEC 202 all about? In this course, you will get your second introduction to circuit analysis, but this time in AC steady state. Expanding on your circuit analysis knowledge from ELEC 201, you'll learn about concepts such as phasers and impedances, power in AC steady state, ideal transformers, three-phase systems, Laplace transforms, body plots, filters, and two-port networks. ELEC 202 heavily uses complex numbers throughout the whole course, so I would suggest giving yourself a little bit of a refresher on them before heading into this course. Alright, now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 202 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week you will have four hours of lectures to attend, where the professor will explain the main course concepts through a mixture of theory, discussion, and some examples. With Professor Linares, we made use of Top Hat, which is a site that Linares liked to use to take attendance during class and to ask participation questions as well. Because of this, and because it counts towards a small portion of your grade at the end of the course, attendance is technically mandatory for these lectures. Attendance is taken at the beginning and the end of class, so make sure you don't leave until you take your attendance at the end of class. Professor Linares also likes to ask his students conceptual questions during class, and if you answer them correctly, he might give you a... <clears throat> Wait a second, I need, I need to prepare my voice for this. Bonus point. For the sake of time, I won't get into how bonus points work, but you can read the syllabus if when you get it. You will also have a two-hour tutorial session each week as well, which can either be used for a tutorial lecture or for a midterm exam. In our year, our class got separated into separate tutorial rooms with around 30 to 40 students per room, and a TA was assigned to us and basically just went through some practice problems. To be honest, these tutorials weren't all that helpful for me, and I ended up skipping them unless they had attendance in them. In terms of homework, you will have web work assignments to complete each week. These web work assignments generally consist of 2-10 to 10 questions and are designed to help you practice the concepts that were taught during the lectures. For me, these assignments generally took between 3-8 to eight hours to complete each week depending on how difficult the questions were. Web work assignments are usually released at the start of the week on Monday and are due the following week. In terms of required materials for this course, you will need a laptop to do your web work assignments and exams on, a Top Hat subscription for $33 US for one term, and the HP Prime calculator. Pretty much everyone except one person that I know downloaded the HP Prime emulator onto their laptop, which you can use for your homework and also during the exams as well as paying over $200 for a calculator is not really in anyone's best interest. The HP Prime is pretty much a mandatory tool to get through this course, as you'll be working a lot with complex numbers, phasers, and complex systems of equations that would be pretty much impossible to solve by hand or with a basic scientific calculator. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 202. In the first part of the course, you'll start with a short review of complex numbers before covering concepts such as phasers and how they will be used in this course, impedances of inductors and capacitors, and different concepts related to power in AC steady state, such as apparent power, active power, reactive power, power factors, complex power, the power triangle, and power factor correction. And this brought us to around the first midterm exam. In the next part of the course, you will learn about ideal transformers and the dot convention, how three-phase systems work and how to solve them, how Laplace transforms can be used to make solving second-order circuits a whole lot easier, and how to find the transfer functions of these second-order circuits. This brought us to around the second midterm exam. 
And in the last part of the course, you will learn about how to draw the amplitude and phase body plots of different transfer functions, what resonance is and how it relates to bandwidth and quality factors, different types of filters such as low pass, high pass, sailing key, and Butterworth filters, how to scale different filters to use certain components, and two port networks, which I got so lazy at the end of the course that I just forgot to take notes on them. This brought us to around our third midterm exam, and the time between the third midterm exam and the final exam was all used for in-class review sessions. And that's pretty much everything that you're going to learn in ELEC 202. In terms of the grading scheme for ELEC 202, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Your web work assignments will be weighted at 10% of your overall grade, and our top hat participation, which included attendance and answering the in-class questions, was also weighted at another 10%. In terms of exams, we had three midterm exams worth 35% in total, and a final exam worth 45%. For ELEC 202, these exams are done through web work using the same format as from ELEC 201. We got a small booklet with the exam questions in them, we got values from the web work question, and then we entered our answers onto web work. But there's another thing to note about the midterms that was specific to Professor Linares' class. They have a team component to them in addition to an individual component. Now, what do I mean by this? Okay, so for the first hour of the exam, it will pretty much be exactly like any exam that you've taken before in ELEC 201. You're doing everything by yourself, showing all your work, etc, etc. But once that part is done, a team assignment opens up on web work for another hour or so right after. In this team assignment, you will get another chance to attempt the exact same exam questions that you just took, but with different values. But this time, you can work and discuss with any of your classmates. The theory behind this was that no one should walk out of the exam hall without understanding all of the questions. The weighting of the individual portion and the team portion differed with each midterm for us, but it was usually around an 80% weighting for the individual portion and a 20% weighting for the team portion. I will say that if you have a professor that is not Dr. Linares, it is highly unlikely that you will have this team portion on your midterms, but I'm just speaking to what my experience in the course was. Oh, and one last note about grading, there are a few requirements that you have to meet in order to pass the course. First, if you're unable to get at least 50% on two of the web work assignments before the due date, you will not pass the course. Similarly, if you don't pass the final exam, you will not pass the course either. And if you want to qualify for the backwards replacement policy, which says that any midterm exam with a grade that is lower than your final exam grade will be replaced by your final exam grade, you must have at least a 90% top hat attendance, at least a 65% top hat grade, and at least an 85% average in the web work assignments. But because of how poorly some of us did in the midterms and the final exam, Many of these requirements were definitely dropped, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. All right, now onto some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 202. I will say that many of the tips that I mentioned in my video about ELEC 201 will also apply to ELEC 202 as well. So go watch that video if you haven't already, as I'll mainly be focusing on stuff related to ELEC 202. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, I had Dr. Louise Linares as my professor for this course, and he is definitely a very iconic character within the ECE department here at UBC. He has also made YouTube videos on a lot of the topics covered in this course. Maybe all of them actually. And they are genuinely really, really good videos. I would often watch them and take notes on his videos of a topic before going to a lecture because I found them that helpful. And they are a great resource if you're struggling to learn the concepts in class. He also has videos where he goes through some very old exam questions, which definitely helped when studying for the midterms and the final exam. I'll leave a link in the description below to Dr. Linares' channel as he has a slightly odd channel name that can be hard to remember. Basically, if you don't know how to do a web work question or are confused about a concept in the course, there's a very high chance that Linares has made a video about it already. 
In terms of studying for the exams, redoing the Warburg assignment seems to be the most effective way of practicing your circuit analysis skills in preparation for an exam. And it was what most of my friends and classmates did. In fact, some of the questions on the Warburg assignment actually ended up being questions on some of the midterms. So it definitely helped to go through the Warburg assignments again before each of the exams. And if you are curious, these were the averages for each of our midterms, and I'm sure you'll be able to see that our class slowly deteriorated as the course progressed. I mean, we started with a 65.5% midterm average, and then we ended off with a 40% midterm average, which shows either how much deterioration happened or how messed up our exams got. And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 77% in ELEC 202 and the class average was 69%. Considering a fair number of people that I talked to technically didn't pass the final exam, I'm fairly sure either some insane scaling occurred or many of the pass requirements were dropped in order to achieve an average this high. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into ELEC 202. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that the next course that I'll be covering will be ELEC 211. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.